Episode 76, Getting Recentered in the Middle of Chaos. Welcome to the First Year Married Podcast, where we get real about building the marriage of your dreams. I'm marriage coach Kayla Levin, and I take newly married and engaged women from anxious and insecure to confident and connected through practical tips, real life inspiration, and more than a little self-awareness along the way. Hello, my friends. I recorded seven versions of the podcast this week. I've never experienced anything like that. I wanted to provide for you an unbiased podcast episode that discussed how to disagree with your spouse because I had a couple of people reach out to me asking for some, some ideas or some guidance. What I realized is that I'm in too deep in my own emotions and my work right now to be able to record a podcast for you about disagreeing with your spouse about what's going on in the world and be unbiased. So I'm not going to try and do that <laughs> this week. I'm already late. I'm already two days late putting this one out. I hope I can offer you a lot of valuable coaching tools down the line about how to disagree with your spouse. In fact, if we were talking one-on-one and you were specifically asking me questions, I know I could do that right now. But in the context of a podcast episode that is going out to so many different people, and again, with me where my head is right now, I don't think this is the time to do it. So instead this week, I'm going to be sharing something a little different. So like a lot of you, I had a lot of difficult emotions over the last week, and I I found myself doing a lot of things that were really not helpful. I also found myself experiencing a lot of stress and anxiety and sadness, but the sadness wasn't, that one was fine with me. The stress and anxiety I found myself, uh, it caused me to be unproductive. And I don't mean unproductive, like ignoring what's going on in the world and then going back to my life, but even unproductive in trying to take the next step in what I actually had already decided that I wanted to do. If you follow me on Instagram, you see, I like put together a little mini curriculum for myself that wasn't doing it. And when I examined all the difficult emotions that I was having, I found that the underlying thought was I couldn't trust my own thinking, which makes sense in a way. If I'm exposed to a bias that I have, and I absolutely have a bias as a white woman, and I'm beginning to question myself and my thinking, and I'm thinking back over relationships and situations and friendships over the years and seeing them from a new perspective, then it's logical that my brain would conclude that my thinking isn't reliable, right? And I think that's what we have a lot of right now, at least what I'm seeing in the way too much time that I've been spending on social media since that's been my buffer lately is people being scared of their own thinking. And so they're just becoming a mouthpiece for someone else's thinking. And I think that's really sad because I think that then we lose out on each individual's ability to contribute. And I also think that when someone is being a mouthpiece, we know it's not authentic. And then what they say has a lot less power. The issue with all of this, right, with 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 questioning your brain, because in some ways we should be questioning, meaning I think that there is some valuable work to be done there, right? But the problem is that for me, it really wasn't working because instead of listening to the audio book that I had selected very carefully and, you know, listening to certain pod, like, like Brene Brown had an amazing podcast episode with Professor Abram X. Kendi, who I a lot of you have seen his book going around, right? So like this was the kind of work that I wanted to be doing. And what I found myself doing instead is scrolling Instagram for the angriest, most intense comments and sort of imagining all those people in my room yelling at me. (laughs) So it felt like this is all really important and really critical. Like I need to know what's making people angry. And from the emotional experience that that caused, like the anxiety and the stress and the pressure, I knew that I was totally in my lower brain. I needed to get out of my lower brain to be able to actually do the more difficult work of growing and examining my bias and all of the work that I really do earnestly want to do. And when I'm struggling with getting out of my lower brain, and this is the tool that I want to share with you, it works really, really well with my clients who have a lot of anxiety, which sometimes is all of us, right? So I ask myself this question, what do I know to be true? What do I know to be true? 
And this question immediately centers me in my wisest place. The place that knows what she believes and also knows she doesn't know at all. So I thought I'd make a list for you. Really, this is for me and you guys are going to eavesdrop <laughs> because I think it will be helpful for you to hear of what I know to be true. I know that the most important thing in my marriage is to constantly discover and love the man I am married to as he is. I know that other beliefs are not a danger to my own. I know that every issue has gray area. I know that anger and shame don't educate anyone. I know that the best way for me to educate myself is to plan in advance a curriculum and not to just follow the flow of social media. I know that deep work takes time and patience and compassion. If I want to be in this for the long haul, I must make this a healthy and positive process. I know that as a human, I will always be a little bit blind. And it is always a gift to be exposed to my own glasses so that I have the option to remove them. I know that it's a gift to live in a world with different cultures and perspectives. And the more we can listen to and learn from one another, the more we all benefit. That sounds really cliche, but I really believe it. I know that part of my blindness means not understanding those who are coming from another perspective, even about blindness. I know that the closest we can get to the truth is to be willing to hear each other. I know that we exist in information silos, especially in the age of social media and internet, and that I believe in open dialogue in response. And this one's a little religious, but I believe that God makes angels. So if he wanted me to be perfect, he wouldn't have created me a human. I come back to that one a lot. <laughs> If you, like me, are feeling swept away by the strong emotions and opinions being shouted right now, they're really not shouting. They, I think they're shouting because they look angry. Being written all over the place. I want to encourage you to make your own list. What do you know to be true? We can only ever begin there. I look forward to hearing from you. As I said, I believe in dialogue. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your experiences and your responses to this episode and all of the episodes. Have an amazing week. Bye-bye.